I'm going to go through the configuration of uh, the Raspberry Pi CCTV project that I've got. So all we, all we have to do is go through a readme file which I've created. Um, uh, I'll go through it line by line. Uh, the first thing to do is create a clean Raspberry Pi, uh, Pi OS image on the SD card to start with. Um, it, I'm using uh, the light version of Raspbian because uh, you don't actually need a desktop on it. So I'm, I'm using sort of the minimal version. You can use the desktop version if you want. It's not not an issue. Uh, and in order to c connect to my Wi-Fi straight away without having to manually t uh, connect a keyboard to my Raspberry Pi, uh, you can create a file or edit a file uh, called. Um, so if you mount the SD card, and then uh, edit a file in, in the mount point and then etsy wpa supplicant wpa supplicant.conf you can then the file will probably look a bit like this if you put the your SSID in this area and your pre-shared key in that area and the uh, encryption type here when you boot up the Raspberry Pi uh, when the SD card in is in the Raspberry Pi you'll be able to, it should connect directly to your Wi-Fi network I've created a video on how to do this um, but it's not much more, more than what's actually written here so uh, on YouTube there's a video specifically on how to connect to a Raspberry Pi using this method uh, then place the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and boot up and so as soon as it's booted you should have network access so you should be able to to create a secure shell to the Raspberry Pi where uh, we can do the configuration so I'll, I'll do that here and the default password uh, because it's a new image is ras uh, Raspberry Uh, so the first thing to, I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to get the source code uh, for this project. It's actually just a bunch of shell scripts. So there's not really that much code in there. There's one Python script for doing infrared detected uh, motion detection. And also there's a PHP script for doing um, a web uh, page, which you can monitor what's going on on, on the camera itself. So if we uh, run this line um, and download the software and then just unzip it and at, at this point I just inslet, incidentally tell you that this is uh, the readme file that I'm going through here uh, but if you go to uh, this address I'll put it into a browser now you can get the readme file from here so this is the project which is downloaded and in here there is the readme file it's actually printed at the bottom, but uh, so you can either you can either go through the README file as it is displayed on the page, or you can uh, select to download it from from the from that link there. I'll just close that for now. Um, so what I've done is I've downloaded, it, I've unzipped. So the good thing, good idea to do right now is to change the default passwords on the Raspberry Pi. So I'll do that. For security reasons, um, the current password. I keep mistyping it. Um, right, okay, and then my new password. And also, uh, it's uh, I always set up a root password as well, um, so I change the root password whenever I write a new image. Okay, so uh, ultimately, when the project's in use, I use um, access, secure shell access, but I use it passwordless so that I don't have to keep typing type passwords. Also, I use scripts to access the uh, the CCTV project, and um, if you've got passwordless access, it's a lot easier. Um, so, in order to create um, a, a, a pre-shared key which will give you passwordless access, you sort of follow these lines. I, again, I've created another video on um, in the connection section of my videos uh, connecting to a Raspberry Pi uh, specifically on how to do this but um, again it's not that much more uh, complicated than what we're doing here really so you just have to really paste these um, lines in and that that creates the um, 
an area for secure shell keys um, because it doesn't exist by default. And then you create a pure, uh, a pre-shared key here. Uh, you're supposed to put an email address in here, or uh, but just you can put anything in there. Really, I've found. Um, so if I paste that in here, uh, it takes a few seconds to create a pre-shared key. Um, I'll probably uh, certain bits of uh, this video uh, where things take a while to do. I'll probably fast forward the video through them, uh, but it's, it's it's finished doing this one now. Um, so I always uh, call them. Uh, it this so I you can enter the name in here on the command line and just hit enter for the passphrase because otherwise it'll prompt you for passphrase uh, in the same way that you'd be asked for a password so if you enter put, just hit enter it twice there then when you come to log in using the pre-shared key it actually uh, won't ask you for a password and then what you have to do in order to allow this key to allow uh, uh, access for this particular user, the Pi user, you have to uh, append it to the authorized keys file. So that does that. Okay, so um, so now I do the Raspberry, uh, the Ras the user utility for, on the Raspberry Pi for doing the configuration of the Raspberry Pi. I just do a few things. Uh, so the first thing I do is tell it not to wait for the network to boot. Well, when it's booting. Disable that. Just so it boots quicker if the network's not uh, not uh, not connected. Uh, then I set the, ho uh, the host name, which I think is in advanced uh, options, and I just call it uh, for for the purposes of this. I just call it CCTV X. Oops, VT. CC. Uh, then the next thing, uh, enable, well, uh, secure shell is already enabled because we're using it, so don't have to worry about that. But that's a, like, a note to make sure that to rem uh, if there's any issues connecting, just remember that that option's there. Uh, then enable the cam camera because it's all about using the camera. I think by default that's probably enabled anyway, but again, it's worth just just doing it. Uh, auto login, so um, which is one of these options down here. Oh, uh, maybe it's under advanced. Oh, boot options. Yeah, uh, then because uh, because I'm on the light version, so it's only console. So console auto login as the Pi user, uh, and then finally um, expand the file system. So use that option uh, just to use up the whole SD card, um, and then when click on finish it'll ask me to reboot but I'll say no because because we're going to reboot at the very end anyway so if we just go through the uh, uh, the way it is in the file um, without rebooting at this point uh, it makes it a bit easier to do okay so there's a few config options which I changed uh, for the Raspberry Pi um, by default this disable camera LED isn't in the config file so if we append that to the bottom um, so this is really just whether or not you want to the the camera LED to light when the camera's recording. You might want that, in which case you don't put this line in. But um, I like to have it so it doesn't show the LED. Um, and then I've got the arm frequency I, I set to nine hundred. Uh, how you tune this is is up to you. You don't necessarily need to do these lines, but um, just to make it a bit more. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Just make it a bit more um, powerful. The, the Raspberry Pi whilst I'm doing this. So two five six graphics memory. And then uh, install uh, software. So it's best to update because it's a brand new image. Uh, so the OS itself has probably changed. So do the updates for the OS. And like I said, I'll probably fast forward through these because they're going to take a little while. I'll stop off at each one and uh, explain what each one is. Uh, so next, the next one. So that was updating the the, um, the sources, and now we'd actually do the update of the packages and uh, the uh, distribution updates. And there's none of those at the minute. Um, and then I installed a package which is called libav tools. Now this is this used to be known as ffmpeg. It's used to translate 
one video format to another video format so what I do is I use it to convert the H.264 video from the Raspberry Pi camera into thumbnail images of JPEGs uh, so I can then use those to view over a web browser but you can use it to convert different uh, one format to another format of video uh, it's quite a handy package to use uh, next package is motion um, this is used to uh, use software to detect movement in video files and, uh, and sort of just record bits of video where movement is uh, occurring um, so one of the modes of operation of the CCTV software that I've written is um, to use motion uh, then there's three other um, modes one is to use infrared hardware to detect motion and record just bits of video where the motion occurs uh, and another one is just to record video all the time and the last one is to record JPEG images all the time of the video uh, next package is Apache which is a web server um, and so this allows you to monitor what's going on on the camera from a remote computer so from any remote computer you could potentially open up a hole in your router to the Raspberry Pi camera and then use your mobile phone to monitor it um, whilst you're out and about uh, but you would really want to look into securing things um, really well before doing that and the final package that I use is uh, PHP so on the web server um, in order to script um, a, a page that I've written um, I use a um, source code uh, written in PHP I quite like PHP because it's very similar to C or C++ or Java or JavaScript they're all very similar languages so once you know one it's fairly easy to learn the, the others the next part of the configuration uh, is to make sure that PHP is enabled as a module for the Apache web server and to make sure that the default website is enabled as well now these are typically enabled by default but it's worth just running these lines just to make sure there's no issues um, and then we go on uh, uh, this sets up the directories and the permissions on the directories for the web service that I'm uh, that I'm, that I'm uh, doing and then um, okay so when the system boots um, stuff which is in this bash RC file is is uh, executed uh, so what I always do do on systems where I'm not actually going to be using the system. I always set these hist files to zero. That means there's no scroll backs for commands. Like when you press the up arrow in a command window, it doesn't remember it. So if I ever have to go onto the system and I need to do anything, if anyone manages to hack into the system or, or looks at the system at all, they won't be able to see this kind of things that I have been doing and, and get an idea of what's been going on in the system. That's just um, Good practice. Well, I, I use. It. I think it's good practice to to do that to make sure that um, things are a bit more secure. Uh, and then these are the lines which start whichever mode of operation is required for the CCTV camera. So, just uh, one of these lines needs to be uncommented at any one time. This line, which is uncommented by default, is record all video all the time. But I. Quite like uh, to use this op mode of operation where I use hardware in thread um, to detect motion and just record the bits of uh, motion which is being um, which is occurring outside the camera. So write that to the file. So now when the system boots, it should automatically start the CCTV camera. Uh, and something which uh, you just need to do to configure motion is you need to and uh, add the Pi user to the motion group so near the bottom of the file you should find this motion group name and you just have to add the Pi user to it so the Pi user can use the motion and there's a couple of cron so scheduled programs running which I've which I put in so just to the bottom of the cron list I put these two in so one is to prune data so if the SD card starts becoming full of uh, video or JPEGs uh, then what this does is it deletes the old oldest of them so that the video records can keep recording without running out of disk space 
uh, and then this other one this is quite handy um, so I always use Wi-Fi to connect to the, the CCTV cameras and I found that sometimes it's probably my router uh, the Raspberry Pi I, after a few days disconnects from the um, the Wi-Fi router and it doesn't connect again uh, so what this script does is from the Raspberry Pi point of view it says it makes the Raspberry Pi keep asking on sort of every 15 minutes I think I've configured yeah every, uh, sorry every five minutes I've configured it to do uh, every five minutes it will ask the router are you there and if the router set isn't there it doesn't respond then it will reconnect the Raspberry Pi and since I put this script in I've it's run for weeks so I've never had any disconnection issues with um, with it so this is quite a handy script to use for other projects as well um, it just make, it means that when you're on Wi-Fi, you can make sure that you, your Raspberry Pis uh, remain connectable. Um, this next section you can ignore. So for the motion um, configuration, I've changed. These are the. This is a summary of the th things I've changed in it, uh, just for reference only. Uh, you might want to change different configuration values, whatever. But the, so you, so that you can see what I've done. That's what that's what those values are. And that's basically the configuration complete. So all I do is a reboot now, so that everything takes effect and it starts up um, the system. Uh, and well, I'll open up a, another terminal window because um, whilst that's oh, actually no, that will tell me when when it's rebooted actually because when when I get the command prompt back, it will uh, it will respond. Okay, so now that I've got response again, what that usually means is that the secure shell server on the Raspberry Pi has started up again, and so now it's it's recognised it's uh, closed. So um, I'll operate locally now. This is on my computer, so there's a few things that I want to do on on, uh, on this computer. Um, and one is get a copy of the software because it, there's a package in the package. There's a bunch of files which. Um, actually can be used locally uh, to manage the Raspberry Pi camera so if I get a copy of, of that pack, the same exactly the same package I've got on the Raspberry Pi and unpack that and then uh, I, what I need is the private key which I created earlier for password uh, access the private key should be taken off of the Raspberry Pi as well for security uh, but at this point I'll just copy uh, make a copy of it back locally And I'll place it into the directory where this software I'm packed to. So it's still asking me to enter the password at the minute because I didn't have the, uh, the the key back locally. And uh, finally, what I'll do is I'll check that the password access is uh, working just by running one of the uh, uh, programs, uh, the shell scripts, which is meant to run remotely from there. And what it does is it it um, interrogates the uh, Raspberry Pi CCTV camera and says uh, what data have you stored so all it looks at is the data directory so if I run that and see I didn't have to enter a password and it tells me that this is the file which is currently being uh, recorded and also when you're using uh, the IR motion detection it creates a log of um, the dates and times that it was activated at so it gives you like a, a, an interesting way to see that but that's that's basically the configuration so that's it up and running you can see it's recording video as well um, what I can do actually is I can go to the browser and this so this is the uh, the web server should be set up by default itself as well after you've actually run through that configuration so if I enter just the IP address of the uh, Raspberry Pi into the web server and I hit return that should bring you back a, a, a page which shows me a current image so there's a current image from the Raspberry Pi camera, it's just pointed up at my ceiling at the minute, and it, at the top it shows you uh, a, the just the last, find a few um, entries in the the log for the infrared detection. So it shows you when when the uh, detection occurred. It doesn't stream video; um, it just gives you like a frame. So if I hit refresh, that will give me a frame again. And actually, if if I put um, if I put my hand in front of the camera. Uh, and I hit the refresh button that should hopefully give me uh, an image with my hand on it so there it is uh, so that's it recording and it's bringing back images so you can like monitor remotely uh, what the camera can see um, 
and it records um, the video uh, onto the camera and you can use the suite of packages um, locally as to bring back images but I put that all in a different video uh, because this video is really just for getting the configuration uh, and getting the thing up and running.